guys. You guys ready for dinner? Are you hungry, buddy? On the surface, you look at this movie and it seems pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but it was incredibly complex uh, to do because uh, of the dogs. You know, we don't, uh, we, we're not using sound on this unit, and the very reason that we're not is because we have so many dogs, and, you know, while it would be nice to hear the sounds of dogs barking or the, you know, the clattering of dogs' paws and all the sounds that dogs make, which you're going to see in the final film, if you were to listen to our dailies on a daily basis, you would not hear the dogs at all because the dogs are probably more quiet than the people are. You would have 20 dogs on set, and that means 20 trainers and the dogs are all focusing on their own trainer. So literally we had scenes where the dogs are doing what they're supposed to, and you have 20 people yelling. They're not yelling at their dogs per se, they just have to be heard above everybody else. They would call out to them, they would blow whistles, they would ring bells, they had little snapping things, little clickers, and when I saw that, I realized right away, it was what a you know, daunting task this was gonna be. The producers of the film gave us uh, the opportunities to go out and record um, a lot of dogs. And, uh, and some of it was very serendipitous. Um, here at Universal, the theme park is a big amphitheater where they have an animal show. And there was a lady dressed in a little uniform with a dog by her side. And I went over to her and said, oh, you know, um, is the dogs part of the act? Oh, yeah, we have dogs in our act. And do they, like, bark on command? Oh, yeah, they do all sorts of things. <laughs> Turns out that the lead trainer for this show is one of the trainers from our movie. And not only that, but some of the star dogs are there. In this movie, we had a number of lead dogs, and they all had to have their unique sound. So what I needed to do was build a palette for each dog in the film. I had no idea that an English bulldog had that. I mean, it sounds, it's like the Tasmanian devil. You know, it's this, it's this constant gravelly, growly sound. And it's the coolest sound you ever heard. I mean, I'm gonna save that and use that in my next monster movie. <laughs> that was a good one. I'm responsible for everything you hear in the movie, except for the music. Um, the sound effects, the backgrounds, the footsteps and things, which are it's called Foley, um, uh, the full sonic environment. <laughs> The opening scene um, was something that we'd worked on a long time, starting out with the sniffing and scratching in the window, all the way through him trying to find the guy on the bench with the hot dog. We really detailed that and got a lot of fun sounds in there, along with the design of his sniff vision. As the camera kind of zooms in closer up than the hot dog. That was, to me, that definitely was um, uh, one of the more fun uh, moments in the movie for me. Uh, also, the dinner scene, I spent a lot of time finding all the right little sounds to uh, make it fun and bring, and bring that gadget to life. I'm very appreciative that uh, Tor and all the producers uh, were open to my ideas and, and welcoming in uh, the fun aspects of what sound design can bring to the movie. We had great material to work with, with all the dogs and all the scenes, and um, they really let me uh, go to town and uh, create, help create this world that the kids live in.